Welcome back guys, it's craft time. In today's video, we are making some more of the half wood round boho wall hangings. I had a suggestion to do a rainbow, so I had to of course put my own spin on it. I'm gonna walk you through how exactly I made it. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, to begin this project, I had an 18 inch wood round. I just picked this up at my local hardware store a while ago. I honestly don't remember which one I got it from, but I'm sure that you can find it at your local hardware store. Um, I believe it's around $10. I measured it to find the center point and I cut it in half. I did this using my table saw. However, you can use a hand saw or whatever you have um, on hand. Just be sure to be extra careful and don't lose any of your fingers. After I got it cut down, I went ahead and um, gave it a once over sanding. I just wanted to get any splinters that could have kicked up any or the hard edges um, and just hit those with the sander and knock those down a little bit. And then I did take it over the entire face of both pieces front and back just to get any rough spots sanded down and nice and smooth. And then I just wiped it off with a nice um, wet clean rag to get away any of the debris. So from there, I decided that I'm going to go ahead and paint the entire front and back of each piece with white acrylic paint just to give it an overall clean, crisp look. That way, even on the back and everything, it looks all put together in one final piece. And then I started to mix my paints. So I decided to do a fluid paint over this. Um, the person that suggested it to me wanted me to do um, the rainbow and so I again I wanted to do my own spin on that especially we're coming out of pride month so I thought why not make two of these just fun beautiful rainbow pride inspired wall hangers so I went ahead and grabbed all my colors of the rainbow that would be the purple blue green yellow orange and red I wanted to mix those up, so I am using the apple barrel, which it's just been brought to my attention that the white apple barrel is not good for fluid, fluid art or um, pouring. So if you're going to try any fluid art in, in the future, just do an alternative brand for that. All of the other ones should be fine for you. Um, I have learned how to use it to avoid any cracking and not have any issues, but if you're a beginner and you do this beautiful picture and have cracks in there you're going to be disappointed and i apologize for not sharing that sooner in any of my other videos but i did not realize that's what was causing any problems that i had early on um i guess i just compensated for it and i wasn't having that issue anymore so um again the white um, apple barrel is known to crack so now that we know that we can use something else um because i have figured out how to use it without any issues I did move forward with using that in my um, pour today. So I used my different colors of the apple barrel and then I mixed it in with the color shift. And if you don't know what color shift is, it is beautiful. I have a couple bottles here. Um, they're like metallic paints and they are gorgeous. Um, so I did my Elmer's glue and then half apple barrel, half um, color shift for my paint portion with a little bit of water, mix them up to a good consistency, and then I poured them onto my wood round. Now, I wanted to make sure that the back and the, the bottom edge of this stayed crisp white, so I went ahead and used masking tape and I taped around all of my edges to make sure that whenever the paint were to spill over, that it would come off nice and clean. Um, and then if I needed to touch anything up with the white, I could do that at a later point. So to blow this out, I poured everything out and I did a color and then a ring of white because I wanted, and then I, you know, the next color, then ring of white, color, ring of white. And I did this because I wanted to make sure the colors didn't all just mush together. I wanted it to be clear, concise sections of that certain color, just like a rainbow would. And that white kind of provides a barrier for it to kind of move in together. That way it can all flow together without over mixing or um, muddying up too much. Because again, I wanted to keep those sections very, like this is the purple, this is the blue, whatever. And then they would kind of interming intermingle a little bit um, along the way. So I'm going to show you guys 
the blowout because that's always the best part watching it all come together it's so magical and i love watching this part so i will show you the blowout for both pieces um, for the first one i did lose a little bit of my red so in the second one i tried to back out my purple just a little bit um, that way i had more room to add the red that way it didn't all flow over the edge um, to hopefully save some so I will go ahead and show you guys that now and let you enjoy that part for a little, little bit. to dry so I let it sit for two days um, without touching it um, just letting it be making sure that it was completely dry I didn't want to mess them up because I love how they blew out I love how they turned out they're gorgeous very very happy with it so after that was done and I knew that they were completely dry and I didn't have to worry about any issues I took some of my um, spray that I have left over from doing a couple other paintings it's a gloss I just picked this up from Michael's in acrylic sealer. It's in a gloss finish um, and it's supposed to be non-yellowing for indoor or outdoor. This is what it looks like. And so I wanted to use the gloss on this. Usually, um, if you've watched my videos at all, I'm very big on the Rust-Oleum Clear Matte. Um, but for this one, I wanted to specifically use the gloss finish to try to help those metallic colors really pop and shimmer and shine when the light would hit it. Um, so I went ahead and did, I believe, three thin coats on each one of these, and then I got them prepped to do the yarn work. The way that I like to measure how long I want my string to be, I personally like my string to be at least two times the length of the wood. So my wood from its tallest point is nine inches. So I doubled that and then added a few more. So I did about two and a half of what it is. Um, I happen to have a board that is two feet long. So I took that, I took the, I have like a cream colored yarn that I'm using and I taped it down to on one edge and then I wrapped it and I counted and I wrapped it 50 times. So that would give me a total of 100 strings. 
So you just wrap it and you just keep count of how many times you've done it. And I did do this while I was just sitting on the couch watching one of my shows because it's just a tedious process. And so I did that and then when I was ready, I cut at the ends. And so I tried to get my scissors in to the very um, side of the board to keep it as even on each side as possible. And then I just cut the yarn and then I remove it from the board from the other end that are still um, attached to each other to where the center of the yarn would be. And then I cut that in the middle as well to give me two, um, both of the sides of the board, if that makes sense, um, like where it wraps. You have a, a chunk of yarn on this side of the board, a chunk of yarn on this side, um, and now I have two total and it should be around 100 strands. I did this for both pieces. Um, when I went to put them out and lay them down and I started um, using hot glue to do them. So whenever I do that, I just take out, um, it usually is kind of a rough start kind of getting into the groove of things, but typically I can do four to six pieces of yarn um, at a time to, so I just put down a little line of hot glue, not too much because the hot glue dries really fast. Um, so like I said, around four to six of them at a time, I try to make them even all through the top, leave a little excess and then push them down. I do have these um, silicone fingers that I found at the Dollar Tree, which were awesome. Um, this is the first time I'm actually using them. And it's the first time I've never burnt the finger pad off because I just touch hot glue all the time. Uh, whatever, I've burnt this finger pad off like more times than I can count. So these things are awesome. I definitely suggest you go and checking them out. Um, they're just, like I said, little silicone finger pads. Here, I have them right here. Um, it came in a pack of three for a dollar and they're literally just like little cones that you put over and it got glue all over it and it literally just peels off because it's silicone. So that was pretty cool. Um, but yeah, so just little sections at a time. I do that all the way across. And then when I got to the end, I didn't have enough yarn. So I did for the um, the 18 inch one, for the size yarn that I have, it took basically like 60 wraps around. So like a, a total of 120 strands. Um, so I just borrowed from the stuff I already had cut to finish that one out. I took some white ribbon that I just had um, laying around. I'm pretty sure that came from the Dollar Tree at some point too, just the thin strip of ribbon. And I hot glued that um, to the back of the yarn just to kind of give it more of a finished look. Um, I did cut down the excess string that was um, hanging over the back. You don't have to do that. It was just a preference of mine of how where I wanted the ribbon to lay. So I just cut off the stuff that was like above the glue line. And then I put that ribbon down over it um, cut the sides flush and set it aside to do my second one. So pretty much the project is done other than putting in the D loop, which I got a package of these off of Amazon. Um, it's just a big package. These are my favorite hangers to use because they feel very secure. They hold, um, beautifully and they stay in place, but they also have a little bit of wiggle room just in case, you know, you might be off just a little bit. It can kind of move to where you need it to, but um, I really, really like putting these on my pieces. I feel like they're very secure. Um, I don't worry about them coming out because they come with little screws, but the screws aren't too deep to where you can use them on most projects, but they're also very sturdy and hold a decent amount of weight. Um, they do make them in different sizes, so that's um, a, you know a suggestion if you're not sure what to use to hang your projects. I really like these. Um, this wood's pretty soft. So for the most part, I don't have to do any type of piloting holes or anything um, to find out where to do the um, hanger. I just measured from, you know, it's 18 inches across. So I know the middle is nine inches. And then I just drew a line up to center so that I know where to put it in. I put that on the back. I hung it on the wall. And then I went ahead and brushed through all of my yarn so that I could cut the bottom across even. Um, you can cut this in different patterns. You can do, you know, like a triangle down. You can do, you know, a triangle up through the middle. You can do a diagonal. You can do it rounded. However you feel like doing it, I just wanted it to be a simple straight cross. And then whoever purchases this, if they don't like that, they can cut it however they want to. Um, so I did that for both just to try to make it as even as possible. 
And that was pretty much it for this project. I love how they turned out. I think they look gorgeous. Like I said, they have just like the slightest shimmer to them. Um, they do take a lot of time. Like I said, I mean, just the dry time alone was two days. Um, so definitely have some hours put into these, but I love how they turned out. I have one of them right here with me. So you can see on the back, I tried to give it a nice, like more finished look, um, but with the ribbon across the back, I have my little hanger here. Um, show you the front. So you can kind of see how it's kind of like, sh like not really shimmering, but just glistening kind of. That's just the, those color shift paints working their magic. I did let it flow over the edge on the top. Um, with any pore, like I have like little spots here where either it didn't cover all the way or like right here where the tape kind of peeled it up, but no one's gonna see that. So I'm not too concerned about that. Um, it's just kind of the nature of the pore. Um, yeah, I can't wait for you guys to tell me what you think about these. Do you all like them? What would you have done different? Would you have done a different color scheme? Again, um, the person I talked to wanted rainbow, um, especially because it was Pride Month whenever I was talking to them. So I, again, put my spin on it. I think that's what you should always do. Don't just, you know, take somebody else's idea exactly for what it is, unless it's perfect. Sometimes there's some things that people do that are just like, nope, that's it. And it's very flattering for you to want to um, replicate it, but I very big on taking somebody else's thing and putting your own twist on it to make it yours. So that's what I did here. I love the way these turned out. It's an easy project, but I say that with quotations, but it takes up a lot of time. Like it's very tedious work, especially to put all of like, you know, lay your yarn or your jute or your um, twine, whatever you plan on using. Sorry, there's something floating. Um, whatever you plan on using um, for it. Um, and there's so many different ways you can do it because you can use any color that you, you want. Uh, I went with plain, like this cream white color because with all of the bright colors at the top, I didn't want to overdo it. So make it yours. If you guys give it a try, I would love to hear from you to, to know what you did, what you chose, um, what you possibly did differently. Um, I would love to hear from you on whether you like this project or not. Um, if you like the video, give me a thumbs up. If you're new here, please consider subscribing. If you're returning, thank you so much for being here with me. I love what I do. I love um, showing you guys what I've been up to. So I'm going to bring you in for a closer look and I will see you next time.